thrown into the, the, tr the trenches. Well, he, he recovered from it. But you know, that happening to him made him very sensitive to the smell. So, one time, gas was coming, the men were asleep in the trenches, and he ran up and down the trenches barking and waking them up so they could put their gas masks on. In fact, I saw one picture where they had a gas mount from the stubby. <laughs> Not only that, but you know, he came in handy in another way. Between the two trenches, it was barbed wire, and sometimes the men would jump up and try to fight their way over and take the other men. And they called this no man's land because it was probably a bad place to be. But you know, Stubby was so short that he could climb underneath the barbed wire and he could take water to the injured soldiers or he could lead the medics to these soldiers. Pretty great. The people, he would, took notice. I mean, the leaders even took notice. And one time, this German soldier made it across into the Allied trenches and Stubby spotted him right off the bat and started barking. And he made him stay right there until the guys came and arrested him. Now for that, the commanding officer decided that Stubby needed to be promoted. So he became the first ever dog to receive a position as sergeant. So he became Sergeant Stubby from then on. I said that he served in 17 battles in 18 months and he'd been injured twice and he'd received multiple medals including a Purple Heart just like men did. And you know when he came back, the American people just fell in love with Stubby. Stubby, he would he be in parades. He met three American prisoners of uh, presidents. <laughs> Not bad for a month, right? He was a national hero. But you know, there's there's Bible stories about strays too that end up rich. If you remember Joseph with a many colored coat. He became rich and he became second only to the Pharaoh in Egypt. And then we had David, he was a shepherd boy and he became the king of Israel. And then you can remember Daniel because he was hauled off to Babylon as a prisoner and he became a prime minister. And then, of course, there's Esther, who became queen. So, God can do amazing things. And you know, it makes me think back to the time when Jesus was here on earth. You know, when Jesus was rounding up his disciples, he didn't go down to the Jerusalem synagogue or seminary and pick up 12 men. No, he went to the seashore, he went to the, the, shepherd, the shepherds out of the fields. Uh, he even picked up some that were listening to John of the Baptist on the, 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 the uh, banks of the Jordan River. He even got a tax collector. But he took those 12 men and he made them really something. And those 12 men turned the world upside down because they became such spiritual leaders. And we are a result of that today. And just remember what Jesus did for those strays he can do for you too. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your love. And we thank you, Lord, that you can take, make anybody a better person.
through you. Lord, we ask that you bless these children that they may they grow and grow in spiritual matters also and learn to follow your lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now that was exaggerated. 
even though he was a real person, they just exaggerated that. So I'm going to tell you a story today of Johnny Appleseed. Now, Johnny Appleseed was a real person. His name was John Chapman, and he loved apples. He loved them so much that he went all over the Ohio River Valley planting apple trees. You see, back in uh, Philadelphia, he got the pressings from the local mill. They were free. All he had to do was wash them and dry them and put them in his bag for spring paneling. And then he would take off walking. Now, when he would find a place that looked like it was a really good place to plant an apple seed, he would stop and with a humble prayer, he would gently push that apple seed into the ground, pat, pat it down. And then he'd build kind of brush around it to protect it until it would grow up stronger. And then he'd leave and proceed to another place where he could plant. And sometimes he planted entire orchards. <clears throat> now, as these, uh, um, then he would go back to Pennsylvania and he'd get more seed and he'd come back. And he did this and as the trees grew, he would, um, he would sell them to the farmers. Now, if the farmers didn't have the five or six cents to pay for the tree, he would trade them for discarded clothing. And you know, if there was really nice clothing and he could see people that needed it more than he did, he would give it to them. In fact, it, legend says that he sometimes cut the holes in coffee sacks where his head and his arms could stick out and he wore those for a shirt. So, he rarely wore shoes. Now, this means that even during the winter, he would be walking around on ice and snow. Legend said that the skin on his feet was so thick that even a rattlesnake couldn't bite through it. <laughs> now, I don't know if I believe that, but that was the story they told. Now, even though he loved the frontier, he didn't eat meat. And what he did, he carried a stew pot or a kettle with him, and he would gather bushes or, or berries or nuts, or, and he'd carry his water, he'd boil potatoes in it, or he'd cook cornmeal, mush. Sometimes you'd see pictures of Johnny Appleseed and he'd have a pot on his head. Now, I'm not too sure if he really wore a pot on his head. I mean, I would have probably strapped it onto my backpack or something. But anyway, he never married, and he was deeply religious, and he loved people, especially children. And as the settlers became more uh, uh, settled in the areas, uh, um, he would uh, not as lonely as he had been originally, because anytime you go up to the door, it would be opened up to him, and they'd welcome him. And, uh, you know, and the men and the women, they looked at his visits and it's a time to catch up on the news, and, and the children loved him. Uh, because at night, he would tell them tales of the woods, and he would read to them from the Bible that he always carried with him. Now, <clears throat> This one man had planted apple seeds all over, and he was responsible for apples in the area between the Great Lakes, the Ohio River, and the Mississippi. Many, many trees. Um, that was his service to mankind, planting trees so people could enjoy the fruit of them. You know, what would the world be like today if Christians felt the same compelling desire to spread the word of God? Spread God's seeds of truth. Because the word of God is, is Jesus.
Jesus called it, a seed. He tells a story about a sower that goes forth sowing seed. And the good seed is the word of God. And then in Revelations, you read the story about how he is going to come back. And he's going to reap the harvest. So I hope that as Christians, you're interested in spreading those seeds of truth. Now, although the legend paints Johnny Appleseed as kind of a, a wanderer planting apple seeds wherever he goes, research shows that he was really kind of a shrewd businessman because he had to anticipate where the settlers were headed. And then he'd go ahead of them and he'd plant his trees. And over a period of 50 years, he bought and sold tracts of land and developed a lot of apple trees, orchards. And he died at the age of 71. And at that time, he owned 100, or 1,200 acres of apple trees. Legend says it was the only time he was sick in his life. Now, I don't know about that either. But some people say that he was welcomed at a friend's cabin, they ate supper, he told stories, and he laid down in front of the fire, and he didn't wake up. So anyway, you know, Johnny Appleseed was a good example. He, uh, when the farmers looked at him, and they saw him in his discarded clothing, and his barefoot, and his willingness to help people and spread the word. They themselves could count their blessings because they had shoes, they had a warm place to stay, a roof over their head, plenty to eat. But Johnny Appleseed, he was content with what God gave him. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you give us, Lord. And let us be ever mindful of the things that you give us. And ever mindful of the needs of others that we may extend a helping hand. And Lord, help us spread the word of God that others may know the truth and forever love you and be with you in heaven.